Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be going over the reading or English section on the ACT exam. Um, it's going to be very similar to what you'll see on the SAT and today's video is going to be hosted by College Connect Tempe. So we're going to be doing a practice set today as a group um, but before that I'm going to give you a brief intro into who we are and then I'll give you some time to read over the passage and then we'll go over them together. I would recommend having a piece of paper and pencil available to you so you can work along with me. But really quickly before we get into practice, just a really brief introduction of what College Connect is. We are your hub for advising and help with planning for anything after high school. So that can include anything from FAFSA completion, applications, personal statements, career exploration, and job and internship searching. If any of those or more um, seem of topics that would be of interest to you, you can find us, for those of you living in the city of Tempe, at your Tempe Union High Schools, as well as at the Tempe Public Library. Now, if neither of those times work for you or you are a little bit out of that scope, don't worry, we also offer online and virtual sessions and advising. If after this video, you would like some more support either on this or with another topic, feel free to head to tempe.gov slash college connect and schedule a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment. If you are looking for some more test prep, you can schedule an appointment with me, Sarabi, and any of our advisors can also support you with this or any other topics. Now, um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get straight into the practice. Today, we're doing the reading exam on the ACT. Um, these are what the directions will look like on your exam. You get 35 minutes for 40 questions, so that does give you a little bit of a time crunch. Um, but as you can see, you'll be given a passage, and then you'll have to answer 10 questions about the passage, and you'll have four passages total. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to jump to actually passage two. That's what we're going to be working on today. Um, it's important to read the informational. I always find it really helpful. It helps you set the tone for what you're going to be reading about. I'm going to give you guys just a couple minutes, and what I'll actually have you do is if you would like to read this passage beforehand, please go ahead and pause the video right now and start reading. Um, I'll just scroll through slowly, but please take the time that you need to read through this um, so you can be prepared to answer the questions. So um, go ahead and pause the video right now, and you can just scroll through as I uh, scroll through this reading. Awesome. And again, feel free to pause if you need some more time. I know that was very, very short, um, but we're going to get straight into the questions. So the main purpose of the passage is to, now my recommendation, especially with this reading exam, is to give an answer in your own words and see which one best matches the answer that you had. So in this case, what I thought this passage was about was about how he became um you know, how he became this person that ran all these gigs and how he became very successful in that, you know, he started from more of an environment that he didn't think was going to result in his career that he has now. So if we look at the options, um, let's do some process of elimination compared to the answer that I gave. So one, musical taste gradually changed over time. That's not necessarily what happened. Um, the only thing that changed over time was maybe the fact that he thought he wasn't going to be a musician and then ended up doing that as his career. This doesn't describe how his professional life affects his personal life very much. I mean, he did talk about how he worked a little bit harder at some points to, you know, be able to pay off his daughter's um, education, but it doesn't really talk about affecting the personal life at all. Also, this not discuss different instruments. The only instruments we really see a focus on, I would say, is that guitar that his, I think his brother got him. So C is also not correct. And D definitely makes sense because it talks about how over time he became successful as a band leader. All right, so D is our best answer right here. Now let's look at number 12, one theme of the passage. So again, let's think about what we kind of saw throughout this passage, and then let's do some process of elimination. In this case, it isn't easy to just guess what the theme they're talking about is. So let's look at what they're offering as options. Um, so let's go backwards. Pursuing one's dream should take precedence over more practical matters. That's not true. He definitely did pur pursue his practical matters. And the, you know, dream of becoming a musician did end up working out, but that wasn't due to dreams versus practical. That actually ended up being more practical for him. Recognizing one's limitations is necessary in overcoming one's failures. I don't think we see a lot of like failure and success 
theme throughout the story. So I would not say the failure theme is correct. Talent is the most important factor. That's definitely not true because we do know he's talented, but that wasn't enough. He had to work very hard. That leaves us with F. But also if we look at F, that also makes the most sense because it says once previous experiences and pursuits can be useful in achieving success, that's going to be very critical because we see that he, um, you know, grew up getting used to music and being a musician and that helped him become successful as a musician. So that definitely makes sense. Um, another thing to look at when we're answering these questions is things like the most or things that are, you know, very defining. So in this case, can be useful is great because that doesn't restrict us. But in this case, talent is the most important factor is very restrictive. And we usually don't want to choose answers like that. Similarly, should is a very restrictive word because that ties us into saying like this is the best option when that's not always true. So that's why we also will tend to stray away from those. Which of the following events um, occurred last chronologically? We want to make sure we know that this is last. Now let's label these, you know, one, two, three, four, five. If we look at the story, we see that um, sound ideas was first, and then he started doing the limousine. So we already have one and two here. Um, and then let's think about who came first. Bronner was three years ago, and oops. Bronner was three years ago, and then Taylor was four years. So Bronner is definitely the most recent. So that means B is our correct answer. Now, if we're looking at number 14, based on the residents of Gordon Heights in 1950s and 60s, um, they would be best described as which, if we look at the um, options, we see, let's see, let's go back to the passage where they were talking about this. So like any American boy in the 50s and 60s, he was fascinated. Now, let's see, it's even earlier. All right, Gordon Heights, founded by like-minded thinkers, didn't come here to fool around, ambition. So ambition, let's look for a synonym for ambition here. Um, I'd say driven is definitely going to be our best option because they're talking about how they work very hard. Um, we do not see artistic, so that's definitely not correct. Um Friendly and easygoing, while that might might be true, we don't see evidence to support that. So keep in mind for every answer, we definitely need evidence. And out of all of these, the answer we best have evidence for is going to be G. Now, the main purpose of the third paragraph, let's jump back to the third paragraph, lines 13 to 22. Right, if we read through this really quick, it kind of talks about, you know, what he was listening to. And then he finally got a guitar and he started playing some music. So let's see, it kind of talks about like how he started getting into music, I would say. A is definitely not correct. We, it is nothing specific to Sinatra. While that might've been an inspiration, it doesn't mean he only listened to Sinatra. There's nothing about parents, so that's not relevant. And in fact, they explicitly say in this reading that Holmes was not a prodigy. He was good, but he was not, you know, a child prodigy. So C is definitely not correct. That leaves us with D as our best answer. Now, same thing, but fourth paragraph. Um, so this was three, so now we're at four. Um, you know, it talks about how he was good at it, um, good at making money, how he was able to, you know, kind of profit off of this. So let's see. Um So that's not true. It, it doesn't talk about promoting his band at all. It talks about him being able to play music, but it doesn't say it's better than that, than being able to promote this band. Now, this is definitely true because we see that he doesn't have, you know, the biggest list, you know. Um, so, you know, it says that he learned three songs and formed a band and that's it, but they sold out. So that's going to be really critical in this paragraph. Um there's no national phenomenon happening in this paragraph. And then also the early success is also not true. So G is definitely the best answer in this case. Let's jump back up to 17. The main reason he preferred playing at weddings. You might remember this from the passage, but if you don't, let's go ahead and scroll up and we'll see that he um, was able to make one night what he used to make in five. So that means it was more profitable. He was making more money. That is definitely option C. Main idea in 11th paragraph, so that's 73 to 80, is kind of talks about, you know, like the people he works with, um, 
how long they've been with him, etc. So in this case, we see, let's go back. And um, for those of you who might not know, turnover is kind of like the pat, like, um, you know, people quitting and then needing new people. Um, and that's pretty something that you might see commonly. And so in this case, he accepted that turnover or having to get new people over and over and having people leave was going to be common. But he's surprised to see that it's actually pretty steady. So if we look at the options, um, F is not correct because he's saying that he actually does have steady people. He isn't changing um, his musical style based on that. Um, and then we look at G, typically needs more band members of late parties than private parties. So he does need quite a few people to play at the weddings, but he doesn't really talk about how much he needs to play at the pri private parties. So this isn't completely correct, which is why we can't choose this as an answer. Your answer needs to be 100% correct, not just partially correct. And then let's see, H is definitely what he was saying. You know, um, it's been pretty consistent for a career that usually would not be this consistent. And then Jay is talking about, you know, changing the core lineup, but he, this paragraph explicitly states that that doesn't happen. So H is definitely your best option. Now, if we look at the last two paragraphs, it kind of talks about how Holmes band members like playing with him because um, they get to kind of do their own thing. They aren't, you know, stuck to a certain script or forced to do things a certain way so with that in mind which one is the best option definitely not a um c is true in that he did play in the club scene but that's not why band leader or the band stays right the band members stay because they're allowed to show their talents during the gigs and that's why b is correct all right. And then in the passage, the phrase were something more canned. If we look at that, it's right here, ultimately preferring the messy alchemy of live music to something more canned. So in this case, we're talking about live music. And if we're comparing it to something, we're probably comparing live music to recorded music. So that's something to keep in mind right here. Um, so which one shows that recorded music? J. So that's why J is our best answer here. So that is one full section of um, the uh english or reading section on the act exam keep in mind you have four of these so we just finished one you have three more um in order to get really comfortable with these i really recommend doing as much reading as you can like reading at night before you go to sleep reading on your way to school things like that that'll really help you be familiar with the different types of um passages that you'll see on the exam if you have any questions after this video or if you want to do some more practice please feel free to schedule a one-on-one -on -one advising appointment with me sarabi and we can go over them and if you have any other questions or if i'm not available you can absolutely meet with another advisor and they will definitely be able to help you um with that said we are wrapping up for the for today so thank you and have a great day thank you for watching